I'm knocking things over again. Hello humans, my name is Dale Kingsmill. Tani, you recommended that I should do a, a bookshelf tour of the stuff that's behind me here. And you know what? I think that's a good idea. For close-ups on what I'm looking at, I have. It's the GoPro. Get ready. This is professionalism. No, no, not photo. No, not time-lapse. All right, okay, so it begins. First up, what do we have up here? Is this fish-eyed? What is this setting? No, linear. Just linear. That's better. Okay, up in this top corner here, what do we got? We got a, a million Magic the Gathering cards back here. People ask me about this from time to time. My relationship with Magic the Gathering is I, I like to play at the kitchen table with my brother. <laughs> that's, that's basically the extent. I like the pretty art. I like to look at the cards and go, ooh, ah. I have about a, a gazillion Theros boxes here. What happened there? Via Geek and Sundry, I had asked, hey, I could do like a Magic the Gathering integration with my mythology videos. That could be fun. And they were like, yeah, sure. And so Wizards of the Coast was sending me like a product package to talk about stuff. And basically they, they clearly intended to send me like one of each thing. But instead of sending me one of each thing, they sent me one crate of Theros fat packs. And it was the greatest day of my life. I, I was so happy. I was like, well, maybe if I just don't say anything. And then like a week later, they sent me a letter and they were like, sorry, we forgot to send you this other stuff. Have even more complimentary stuff because we forgot to send you this extra stuff. And so I got all the things that hadn't arrived because I was meant to get like one of the jewel packs and one of the whatevers. And so they sent me those plus more. I mean, I would feel guilty about just keeping them all, except um, that it's a corporation and I don't. My TARDIS clock, I have not changed the battery in 10,000 years and I'm not about to start now. What, what's this called? What's this called? This thing that people do? Embroidery. My friend Chip made me this embroidery. It says, guess I'll die with a nat one. That's cute as hell. This was a birthday card from my parents. It says uh, the said door of attention. That's what my parents think of me. And you know what? They're right. What do we got here? We got a little um, Dionysian wine stopper. This is not a forwards game with Mario on Mario Kart. This was a cross stitch made for me by my friend Max. At uni studying theater, my, my sort of main friendship circle formed when we all bonded over board games and Mario Kart. I had never really played and I was very afraid of the things that were happening in Peach Gardens. Things were bad. And I um, now famously said, this is not a forwards game, this is a treachery game. Oft quoted amongst the friendship circle and so I was gifted this cross stitch. Some juggling balls. I can juggle. The people don't remember this about me, but I can juggle. This is my Rubik's Cube. When I first got the Rubik's Cube, I, cause I can't do a Rubik's Cube. I just thought it was like a nice aesthetic background element. I shifted one row to a different color. The sheer number of comments I got that were frustrated that the Rubik's Cube wasn't solved, I, people hated it. And so then I thought it would be funny. Every time someone left a comment, complaining that the Rubik's Cube wasn't solved, I would shift the Rubik's Cube one row further away from being solved. This is where we're up to. So theoretically, I could just go back through all my videos and watch for every change of the Rubik's Cube and undo it all. In theory. What's this? Back here we've got, uh, oh, this is my, okay, this was my high school. So I went to a performing arts high school uh, and I won the drama award. It's like the year 12, you got top placement in drama uh, award. It's one of my proudest achievements. So I'm a big dork who keeps it on my shelf. I don't know, I was cleaning my room one day and I found some cardboard. So I just drew this um, fairy uh, sort of parade based on the art of that guy. What's that guy's name? I don't know, I'll find it and I'll put it up. This dude did really creepy art of fairies and I was thinking about that and I, I just drew this picture instead of, instead of cleaning my room. This is um, from Tiger Monkey, one of the other Geek and Sundry vloggers, if you're unfamiliar. He was gifted a whole uh, barrel of monkeys where someone had painted each of the monkeys to be a tiger monkey. Uh, and that was a very cute gift of his and he gave one to each of the other vloggers. It was very, very sweet. This is Okidoku Jin. Uh, I got him on my first ever trip to LA. He's just a little foldable robot. I couldn't decide between Mokujin 
or okie doke so he's okie doke -jin. if you look really closely somewhere on his chest there's a there's a little dent from my cousin who we were staying with in LA uh, with a BB gun shot the box and it <laughs> the BB went through the box and left a dent on the on the robot's chest and that's there forever articulate is a big favorite of the family or articulate if you say it that way which I don't trust you if you do my sister and I unbeatable unbeatable we're actually banned from being on a team together because we will remember the most absurd offhand reference from watching one episode of a tv show five years ago and we'll just make it work we cannot be stopped i'm not gonna go through all of these books just because um there's so many there's so many this soap it's horse in a soap omar loves spirit stallion of the cimarron and I just do not care about Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron. So Omar likes to pretend online that I love Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron, and indeed all horses. And he bought me this soap in which there is a horse. Some hedgehogs, when I was a kid, I really liked hedgehogs. My Shakespeare collection, it has very pretty colors. This, okay, well this, I have to, I have to go to the main camera. Okay, this is Stabitha. Some of you weren't here um, when Stabitha first came to us. So, you know my knife? I have this knife that my cousin got me for Christmas um, that is a mermaid knife. When Christmas came, it had not yet arrived. And so my cousin hand forged one, hand forged. So he went out and he bought a Barbie and he put a knife in it. <laughs> so it's a mermaid Barbie with a steak knife in the back. Um, so that's the Mer Blade. This is Stabitha, fear me. It is one of my most prized possessions. Some of you out there thought I just had a random mermaid Barbie. You did, didn't you? I know you did. Oh no, I'm knocking things over. Okay, well, this is Dale from Chippendale Rescue Rangers. I feel like I don't have to explain that. We got some board games I love. Talisman was honestly, I think genuinely, one of my influences on like my conception of fantasy we had specifically the second edition of talisman I, I sought this one out because it was the version that we had when i was a kid i used to just pull this out and look at all the art and look at these the little chits that had gold bags on them and i was just in love with it conceptually and so I, I would like make my siblings play with me but i don't think any of us really understood how to play the game but i just i, I don't know it really just captured my imagination and i think had a big impact on how I think about fantasy in general. The Firefly game. Lots of you were asking me whether I recommend the Firefly game. I do recommend the Firefly game. It, I, it's, it's a very fun game. It's, it's a solid game. I got a lot of enjoyment out of playing it. There was one game where I got hit by the Reavers, only me, no one else. I got hit by the Reavers like six, eight times, which is just bewildering and very frustrating. So there is kind of an element of randomness there that's not ideal but i don't think it's actually an overwhelming randomness i think that was a real fluke i my memories of the game are fond ones elder sign there's a lot of the trappings and aesthetics of that game that i love pandemic pandemic is a classic a little 3d printed dragon with iridescent coloring these very cute he hangs of things and this is his cave that i made for him it's very important that you talk like that to the dragon. Dead of Winter, probably my favorite board game of all time as of now. Time for Dale's opinion, more embroidery from my friend Kiara. This is a Lego flower. So this actually, uh, in December last year, my cousin died. He's he's actually the same cousin who shot the BB gun at Okidoku Jin. He's the one who made the Murblade. He actually made the Monarchs Factory website. So I cannot, I, I can't express fully just how much impact. Just his fingerprints are all over everything. But he loved flowers and he had always, he had a bouquet of Lego flowers on his coffee table. And and uh, it means a lot to me. And I particularly love it because it's, it's kind of hard to see, but his cat has chewed all of the Lego. And I just think that that's delightful. I'm knocking things over again. All right, what do we got? This is the other part of that Dionysian wine stopper. This is a wine filter. And when you pour red wine in through it uh, to aerate it, it comes out the mouth and it's a very, it's very Dionysus. This down here that's never quite in frame of my videos. This is uh, most of my mythology section. So we've got, what do we have here? We've got Siegfried, we got uh, the Odyssey. This was one of my first mythology books that I ever owned. It's just a, 
a book of mythical creatures that I chose for myself was a book prize in primary school. The Atlas of Legendary Lands, really cool, love it. Book of the Dead, uh, these are the Robert Graves mythology books that I think were kind of my transition from just being tangentially interested in mythology to like interested in mythography. Rutledge Handbook, that's my go-to recommendation, but it's like out of print, you can't find it anywhere. What do we got back here? Mabinogian, Irish fairy and folk tales, the Aeneid, Edith Hamilton, this genealogy of Greek mythology is a really cool one. The Kalevala. Look, it's just a lot of mythology books. I have a lot of them. There's more over there. Some temporary tattoos, very important, just for every, anyone to have, just on hand. This little like ball in a ball game. I got within like a centimeter of finishing this one time and it fell off at the last second and I've, I've never recovered. I don't think I ever will. This is, uh, oh, <laughs> these were notes from, these were panic notes from Omar. So I don't know whether people know this. I have a pretty intense fear of flying. It's hard to explain. I'm not, I'm not scared of flying exactly. It's hard to explain, but I do not like it. And so many years ago, Omar wrote me these panic notes that were like, in case of emergency, break glass. And they were just nice notes to make me feel better when I was panicking. Uh, but I have never opened them because I, I think psychologically, my thinking is, okay, well, if it's not bad enough for me to open these yet, then I can handle it. Right? This is a little um, blue angel from X-Men that I made very badly in eighth grade sewing class. I'm not a sewer. I, de I dearly wish that I was, but I'm not. Is this the worst thing I've ever made? Possibly. But I also put it on the Christmas tree every year. And then my sister hid it from me and couldn't remember where she hid it. And that was a dark chapter in our history. There's a rabbit. People give me rabbits because I don't know whether half of you know this. I'm like extremely allergic to rabbits. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say deathly allergic. No other animals, just bunny rabbits. This is, oh my God, this is, oh my gosh. Remember I said I liked hedgehogs? When I was in primary school, a friend of mine asked me to be his girlfriend by he sewed a ribbon. See, he sewed a ribbon to the hands of this hedgehog toy. And then there was like a little scroll message around the ribbon. That's in retrospect, that is so cute. But I kept it. We got some more board games, Betrayal at House on the Hill, a classic. This was a fancy gift art book I got. It's got some pretty dodge stuff, but also some kind of cool stuff. Let's see what's in here. Pretty dodge, pretty dodge. Some costume design maybe by the looks of things. Oh, these were ideas for different fairy tales, but in different genres. Industrial Little Mermaid. I think this was like Little Red Riding Hood, but apocalyptic. Oh gosh, Julius Caesar fan art, what a nerd. Ah, now we start getting to the good stuff. This is just a kind of a Materia Medica kind of page I did. It's just full of folklore about different plants and how um, they're meant to help or hinder when it comes to fey folk. Stuff like, like you've got the foxglove over here. Stop it given to the fox by wicked fairies to soften his footsteps while hunting. The juice of 12 leaves taken daily will poison fairy influence out of an enchantment victim. And that was all based on like actual folklore that I looked up. These are pre-Wolfgang, Wolfgang adjacent drawings. These are drawings I did of my friends that the Wolfgang concept was based on. So it was like the, the friends that I had in preschool who called ourselves the Wolfgang. I was taken by how different we looked at this time to how we looked as kids. And I thought that that was neat. Oh, this, I did this for D&D. &D. My, my players stole a book from an old house in, uh, in the swamp that they were starting in. And so I made it be like a, a bestiary of like, like the, the person who owned the house was like an ex explorer type who made notes on the kinds of creatures in the swamp. And some of them had hints that would help them in future sessions. And some of them were misleads but I, I like wrote out a whole thing and I just handed this to them. Uh, let's see, pictures of my friends as vampires. You can see my drawing gets slightly better as we go on. And I think that might be it. But there you go, that's my bookshelf tour. I hope that you enjoyed it. Now you know all the little bits and pieces of stories behind all the things behind me on the bookshelf when I make these videos. Thanks for the suggestion for the video. I enjoyed this one. If you wanna support the channel, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what the wording is for this this thing, like and subscribe. I'm trying to think what are like go-to YouTube phrases that might trigger the light up function. Cause I've Googled it and it says that it's meant to be voice activated. Maybe it's just my accent. But if you'd like to support the channel, you can engage with the video, leave comments, like, 
share with your friends. We also have a Patreon, we have a, a merch store. YouTube members and patrons have been getting these videos a little bit early. Hey, you know what? I know that some, some of you joke about sending these videos to your grandma. We joke about it, but I also know that some of you legit do it. And I'd just like to give a message to your grandmothers. Hey, hi, how's it going? I appreciate you. I hope you're gonna have a, a lovely weekend. Share with your grandkid uh, some of the, the cool stuff that you plan to do because they're sharing this with you. Hey, hi, how's it going? Apart from that, I do believe that's it. I'm done. I'll see you next week. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot my YouTube play button. 100,000 subscribers, woohoo!